All right. With regard to other matters we have, uh, I think there were some bench conferences that you want to, that are fairly historical that you wanted to uh, memorialize, but also a new motion based on events this weekend. Mr. Nelson. Correct, Your Honor. Your Honor, as the court is aware, and as uh, prior to coming into court this morning for uh, closing arguments, we had an in-chambers discussion about events of this weekend, uh, specifically refer referencing that a, an elected official a uh, United States congressperson was making um, what I interpreted to be and what I think are reasonably interpreted to be threats against the sanctity of the jury process, um, threatening and intimidating um, a jury, demanding that if there's not a guilty verdict that there would be further, um, further, uh, further problems. Honor, and um, given the fact that um, this jury has not been sequestered, it has been my position all along throughout the course of this case that this jury should have been sequestered at the, at the outset. The jury has not been continually, uh, has not been continually uh, told to stay away from media, only media about this case. There is a high probability that, that members of this jury have seen these comments, are familiar with these comments, and things that have happened throughout the course of this trial. I mean, it's unfortunate that there was another situation that, that occurred during the course of this trial. But obviously, Your Honor, we also, as I mentioned previously too, one of the jurors does live uh, in the city, Brooklyn Center, uh, as I recall. Although I think that is the alternate we just dismissed. I do not believe so. I, believe I thought it was, but go ahead. Um, now I'd have to go back and double check my notes. So, I mean, I just think that the, the sum total of this trial happening in such a public context, I mean, number one. Um, number two, while this, all of this, I mean, the media attention is profound, I have admittedly stayed away from 99% of it, but that has required me to stay away from all media. Um, I mean, the, the, this case has made, uh, made its, found its way into even fictional television. Your Honor, there were uh, two, I was advised of two television shows in the course of the past uh, few days that specifically involved references to this particular case and the reactions of the characters in these stories to this particular case. Um, this jury has, has, despite all best efforts, has been bombarded with information relevant to this case. It is impossible to stay away from it unless you literally shut off your phone or you shut off your TV, you shut off your computer, and no such instructions have been given during the course of this trial. Well, to be fair, the last few times I've advised them, I told them, don't watch the news, pure and simple. Right, but if you can't even watch your favorite Thursday night television program and it comes up, I mean, this, this, is, this is the problem, right? And why I have felt that this jury should have been sequestered uh, from the very beginning. Um, Understood. Make that clear. And so I had moved um, based on that. This again for a mistrial. This the, the idea is is that it is a public trial. I think the court has accomplished that, but the media attention is so profound. It is such a. Um, I mean, it is such a modern uh, comparison. I mean, it's such a modern problem to have. Where literally, I walk from this courtroom into the courtroom where I have been permitted to to stay. During the course of this trial, I've received literally thousands and thousands and thousands of emails, um, so much so that I don't even look at that particular email anymore. So, um, I mean, but my phone gives me alerts on things that just happened. I mean, you can't avoid it. And it is so per pervasive that it is, I just don't know how this jury it can really be said to be that they are free from the taint of this. Um, and now that we have U.S. representatives uh, threatening acts of, of, uh, of violence in relation to the specific case, uh, it's, it's mind-boggling to me, Judge. Well, I'll give you that Congresswoman Waters may have given you something on appeal that may result in this whole trial being overturned. But what's the state's position? Your Honor, the state's position first and foremost, and this is a concern I raised at the beginning uh, of the proceedings, you know, well into jury selection, is that we can't uh, allow uh, statements like this, vague statements, to be considered a part of the record. 
on appeal. If there's a specific statement that a specific U.S. representative made, uh, then there needs to be some sort of formal offer of proof with the exact quotes of the exact statement or some kind of a declaration. And I'm sure uh, Mr. Nelson can do that if he thinks that that's something that's appropriate. Uh, I don't know that uh, this particular representative made a spe specified threat of violence. I don't know what the context of the statement is. I also don't know what television shows um, uh, Mr. Nelson is referring to in terms of any of this. And so I just don't think that we can muddy the record with vague allegations as to things that have happened without you know, very specific evidence uh, that's being offered before the court. As a practical matter, through the jury selection process, uh, the court has provided instructions, uh, has determined whether or not there are any outside influences. The law presumes that the jury follows the judge's instructions, and the court has uh, instructed the jury, instructed the jury today, that they're not to let any outside influences or public opinion swear, uh, sway their deliberation. And the law presumes that they would be capable of doing that. And so without um, any sort of specific uh, offer of proof or information in the record, without any specific evidence <clears throat> that this particular juror, jury was influenced in any particular way, uh, I believe that the defendant's motion should be denied. And, Your Honor, I make, it, I, I make my comments, I mean, in the context of, this is all such an evolving situation. Obviously, I spend my weekend preparing for closing, closing uh, remarks, um, and I certainly can supplement the record with news articles. I can supplement the record with you know, the storylines of the particular shows that were brought to my attention. So there's, I'm making it to note the record at this particular point, and I can certainly supplement. Yeah, you can supplement the record with whatever media reports. I'm aware of the media reports. I'm aware that Congresswoman Waters was talking specifically about this trial and about the unacceptability of uh, anything less than a murder conviction and talk about being confrontational. But you can submit the press articles about that. This goes back to what I've been saying from the beginning. I wish elected officials would stop talking about this case, especially in a manner that is disrespectful to the rule of law and to the judicial branch in our function. I think if they want to give their opinions, they should do so in a respectful and in a manner that is consistent with their oath to the Constitution to respect a co-equal branch of government. Their failure to do so, I think, is abhorrent, but I don't think it has prejudiced us with additional uh, material that would prejudice this jury. They have been told not to watch the news. I trust they are following those instructions and that there is not in any way uh, a prejudice to the defendant beyond the articles that we're talking specifically about the facts of this case. A congresswoman's opinion really doesn't matter a whole lot.